Well, Korean films are struggling in local theaters this spring as Hollywood blockbusters have scared away the local competition. For most of the week, the top five films were all U.S. made with only two Korean films charting in the top ten. And while the Korean film industry is saving the big guns for the summer season, the local independent industry has taken the opportunity to steer viewers to the art house theaters as many award-winning films are being released in April. And last Friday, our film critic Pierce Conran discussed the three student features hitting screens this month. And this week, he takes a look at some bigger titles from the low-budget realm, including Han Gongju, one of the most successful independent Korean films of the past few years. So uh, let's bring in our Pierce Conran in the studio. Hello there, Pierce. Hey there. So uh, plenty uh, of Hollywood titles uh, to choose from in theaters these days, but uh, those looking for Korean films and um, you know maybe feeling a little bit neglected. Uh, mm. Why? First of all, why are there so few local films uh, on the market these days? Uh, indeed, there are a, a huge amount of Hollywood films right now. It's a strong period traditionally for Hollywood fare. Uh, even ahead of summer, they have a lot of kind of strong uh, genre titles. And because it's not one of the the four peak seasons for Korean cinema, which is to say uh, the Lunar New Year period, Chuseok, High Summer, and End of Year, mm -hmm. um, local studios try to kind of uh, stay away. The, the, the while Hollywood is kind of dominating the theaters, the actual audiences are much smaller than they usually are. So it's kind of a it's a bigger portion of a smaller cake. Um, so they're, they're, they're kind of reserving, the, these local companies are reserving their big titles for later this month and then throughout the summer, which is a, you know, a, a prime ground to kind of get bigger audiences. Which is uh, probably why uh, Korea's uh, low-budget independent films are making its headway uh, and making use of this time period when Korean, uh, big Korean big-budget movies aren't making it big in the theaters. A lot of award-winning indies have been released this month. So uh, what can you tell us about those films? Well, indeed, as you say, it's a good time for independent films to kind of come in and take advantage of, uh, of a time when there are less high-profile mm -hmm. Korean films. So if people do want to see Korean films, there are plenty of them there. They're just a little harder to find. And also, uh, a lot of these films uh, debuted uh, five months ago at the Busan International Film Festival, uh, rather six months ago. Um, and in that time, they've managed to kind of build up some word of mouth. They've won awards at international festivals. And they've also had time to find distributors and kind of prepare their releases with marketing and such. So this is kind of a good time before mm -hmm. the kind of glut of big, uh, big budget Korean films will be released in the months to come. Now, what of the films uh, being released, and I hear, you know, it's all over, the, you know, everyone's talking about it, is uh, called Han Gongju. The film has uh, won many awards and is getting a lot of buzz. And, uh, you know, uh, what is so special about this Han Gongju film? Uh, this is indeed a very special film. Um, it uh, debuted at the Busan Festival last October. And uh, while I was there, it's an interesting thing being at the festival. You know, uh, I had the opportunity of seeing a few films before the festival. Uh -huh. A lot of them I haven't seen when I, when I arrive, and uh, as we kind of go around this kind of circle of press people and festival people, we kind of share our favorites and what is good, what isn't. And this is one film that even after a few days, no one had said anything about, no one had seen it. And so I took a chance on it, and uh, I mean, it just completely blew me away. Um, it was, uh, I wasn't expecting anything really, and I ended up just, uh, I'll, I'll freely admit, I was just in tears in the theater. And um, so this film is really incredible, and uh, I was, of course, not the only person impressed by this. People who did see it in Busan, very impressed, ended up winning uh, top awards at the Marrakesh, Rotterdam, and Fribourg film festivals. Uh, at Marrakesh, the head of the jury was mm -hmm. Martin Scorsese, um, mm. and other jury members included uh, the French actress Marion Cotillard. And uh, so Martin Scorsese had some very, very good things to say about it. If you notice any posters for the film around Seoul, you'll see his quote there. And um, I was also very pleased that it won in Fribourg because uh, that is actually uh, my, my hometown. And that's a, oh, a, it's it? a festival I program <laughs> for. So it's a, that's one a, a little more special than usual. And so it's won many other awards. And um, the, the film is, uh, it's hard to kind of talk about the film because halfway through, um, the film kind of reveals itself. And uh, it's, it becomes very, very shocking. And if I kind of say that, that might spoil it. Right. We what, don't want to spoil it for our viewers, right? Of course. But what I can say is that it's about a high school girl who uh, an incident takes place, something quite significant. And she must transfer schools. And so she's no longer with her parents. She's living with uh, um, the mother of an ex-teacher from the old school. And um, she's trying to kind of adapt to this new school and is quite a recluse. But this, this past kind of ends up coming back to her. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the, it all lynches on this, uh, on, this, on this past. And once, you kind of re once that's revealed, it, it becomes very powerful. But even outside of that, the film is so well made, well structured. The performances are just wonderful. It's, uh, it's a remarkable debut, and I think it'll go, it'll go very, very far. I think the, uh, the classroom scene or high school or middle school 
role is a really one of the most uh, popular and favored uh, backgrounds that Korean uh, film directors like to set their story in, and I suppose this is one of them. Absolutely. All right, and, and how do you think this film will do in Korea? I know that it's, uh, it will be released later this month. Mm -hmm. It'll be released next Thursday on the 17th. And, um, as I say, it is, uh, it's getting a lot of buzz, a lot of awards, a lot of media coverage because of that. Local critics have been very, very kind, and um, I think it could do well if people see it. Now, of course, the problem is it is still a limited film, and, and uh, a limited release film. Mm -hmm. and so these small movies don't get a lot of exposure. Um, however, if this one, uh, every so often a film does break out, and if word of mouth does kind of catch on to this, which I really do believe it could, it could end up doing quite well. I'm not talking blockbuster levels, but it could be that a few hundred thousand people might see it, which would be an enormous success, and I certainly hope and think it has a chance of doing that. So, um, have any other low-budget films being released that this must cut your eye, other than this Han Gongju um, movie? Indeed, there are quite a few of these independent films, kind of high-profile ones being released this month. Uh, most of those do come from uh, the Busan Festival. Mm -hmm. Now, I mentioned one of my favorites is uh, a film I talked about last week called Tinker Ticker. That's right. one from the Korean Academy of Film mm -hmm. Arts. So a student feature. It's very, very good. Um, besides that, there are a few award-winning films from Busan. One is called Shuttlecock. Uh, another is 10 minutes, and that one's quite interesting. It uh, focuses on the workplace in Korea. A young worker kind of uh, coming in, and he has to kind of deal with a very difficult work environment, so it's very kind of realistic. Um, that has won awards uh, in Busan. It won an award in a French festival. It's a top award there called uh, the Vesul Film Festival. It was also screening, screened at the Berlin International Film Festival, and just a few weeks ago was in Hong Kong. Um, there's also a new film by Jung Kyu Hwan called My Boy, and he's a very well-known um, independent director, not as well-known as, say, Hong Sang Soo or Kim Ki Duk, but he's made like six or seven films. I won't say this is his best film, but uh, I really liked his other films, so it's certainly in keeping mm. with his style. So quite a few to choose from, but of course my favorite is Han Gong Ju. Han Gong Ju, um, we'll look forward to that. Now, while a lot is on the offer, Piers, um, you know, these are hardly any movies that, um, that are going to topple the Hollywood from its perch, right? Um, mm. I mean, when do you think Korean films will uh, take back uh, local theaters? Um, I mean, over summer, there will be a huge amount of big, big blockbusters, and I think uh, Korean cinema will do really, really well. But uh, even before we go into the real summer months, just in, uh, in a few weeks, on April 30th, there will be two major films released. Um, those are the period film The Fatal Encounter, which is uh, the big return of the very popular actor Hyun Bin, mm -hmm. who was away for his military service for two years. Now, uh, he's, he's a, a very huge star, and the question is, you know, after two years away, is he still a big star? Uh, I think the answer is yes. Already the reservations uh, for the film, it's already at number two in reservations. Oh, is it? Three weeks ahead of release. Wow. So um, that's a period movie. He plays uh, King, King Yongjo uh, mm -hmm. in the, during the Joseon period. And uh, so it'll be kind of um, a period drama pot boiler. Um, uh, I don't know how good the film will be. It looks interesting, but it'll certainly be a big hit. So opening the same week will be the um, thriller The Target, starring uh, Ri Sung Young, who uh, of course was in last year's huge hit Miracle on Cell Number 7. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, another big uh, film with him in the leading role. Previously he was a big character actor. So kind of a thriller from CJ Entertainment could be quite fun. Um, so those two films, I think, uh, are going to kind of uh, battle it out uh, in, in, two, in two, three weeks. And of course, at the same time, there's going to be Amazing Spider-Man 2. So of course, oh. comic book movie is quite popular here as well. But there's, there's, enough, uh, there's enough room for everyone to compete there because that's kind of going to be a very, very long weekend. Mm -hmm. so there's a, a few national holidays following before and after. So right, it's right. Kind of five or six days. Right. So that's going to be, that'll be a very big cinema going period, I imagine. Right. I think the first or second week of May, if you just take a, a day or two off work, then you you get a full seven, eight day long yeah, uh, holiday. So exactly. that will be a big period for, for Korean movies as well as uh, Spider-Man, I suppose. Yeah, I imagine so as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Pierce, thank you so much for this week and we look forward to having you again next week. It's been a pleasure, thank you.